you're going to learn things about oral history, about interviewing people, about creating uh, histories from your community. Uh, we're going to be working on the 350th anniversary of Baltimore County, uh, which is coming up in about two years. And some of your work may just wind up in publications, in media, on television. And that's awesome when you think about having a chance to have your work shown in that way. You're in the historical society today. And that means you're listening and presenting all kinds of interesting materials. We are interviewing Mr. Salmon. Good morning, Mr. Salmon, and thank you for coming today. Mr. Salmon, were you a student, teacher, administrator, or a parent of a child at Fort Garrison Elementary? Well, in the 60s, I was a student, but I've been a parent of children who have gone there recently. How diverse was the student body and faculty relating to ethnic, cultural, racial, and socioeconomic backgrounds? Socioeconomically, uh, as, a, as it is today, it was still a relatively affluent or very comfortable area. So it, it, there really was no diversity. Um, I don't remember any African American kids in my classes. I don't remember any Hispanic kids. It wasn't diverse at all. In what kind of social activities did students participate during and outside of school? A whole lot less than you guys do to today. While there were some organized sports like Little League for baseball, there really weren't as much in the way of organized sports. It didn't have soccer leagues and lacrosse leagues. Much less in the way of, of outside school enrichment activities. There's less of, of, of us being scheduled and having lots of things that we had to do after school. Most of what we did was really more at home. There was really then a greater sense of community in, in neighborhoods. Today, there's, there's less of people going out and playing with their neighbors and hanging with their neighbors and knowing all of their neighbors than there really was then. And, and some of that's because there are a lot more activities that are scheduled for kids now after school, and a lot of that also is that we didn't have the computer to go and then video games to go sit at home and play with when we got home. And although there was television, we only had three channels to, turn, to flip among, and really not very much to keep us interested. Instead of however many you have on your cable channel when you get home. And also there was a safety issue, it was a safer environment then as well. So so we all tended to be outside a lot after school and, and be less involved in more organized clubs as as you think of them now. Thank you so much. Okay, okay thank you thank again you for thank letting you. us talk to you. Oh, I, I enjoyed it and uh, you guys are doing a great job. Your questions were very good. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you. good luck on your project. I, I I think you guys are on a great path. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Selman. Okay, talk to you all later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Good afternoon, Mr. Scheinberg, and thank you for coming today. Good afternoon, and thank you for having me. In what kind of social activities do students participate during and outside of school? You know, friends would come over the house. Uh, they would go to their houses. The neighborhoods were very close. You could walk in one house and stay in another neighborhood? No. Well, that they couldn't do uh, because even in those days we worried about safety a lot. I would say within, I would say within a two block radius, we could let our children go and play over somebody's house without yeah. watching them. 
What drills are performed to prepare students and faculty? You mean like fire drills? Yeah. Yeah. Fire drills. That's a good question. In my time, we had nuclear. Um, nuclear. 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 Yeah, we had. Drills. Yeah, we had nuclear. Where you would have to close the windows, I think. But you had as you got up against the wall or under a desk. Like or. Get, well, if a bomb came, the windows would shatter, and the glass would fly. So you had to be low and underneath the desk. So we would have those fun drills. So yes, we did have safety drills. So how did your wages compare with the standard of living at wages? the time and today? I don't wages. think we got paid. <laughs> and we got water occasionally. They gave us water. No, seriously. <laughs> Pay was uh, very low. I may have started in 1961. I'll tell you, I bet my salary was somewhere like seven, eight thousand dollars a year. Now I did go up a lot the first uh, couple of years. Yeah, it started getting a lot better. Were current events discussed in school, and if so, which important events during your time at Fort Garrison affected school life? You always had the threat of war, uh, unfortunately. Also, during that time, some president was assassinated. Yeah, there were quite a few assassinations. Uh, civil rights movement was going on. Uh, the Baltimore City, you had a lot of uh, uh, bad times as far as neighborhoods go because they felt uh, they had to do violence in order to get their way. Not, not so to speak, crime like you have nowadays. It was like communities would say, you know, we've got to do something bad in order to get our way. And I researched economic situations of school life at Fort Garrison in the 1990s. Introduction. 15 students from Fort Garrison are doing PowerPoints or boards to express their information from their chosen decade. It includes parts of their analysis report and interview summary. It includes bibliography, timeline, in interview information and internet and book source information. <coughs> These are my interview subjects. Mrs. Block, Mrs. Stein, Mrs. Kaplan, and Mrs. Diamond. But I mainly want to focus on Mrs. Diamond. How was Fort Garrison different from today? Technology was different. They had film machines, and they were replaced by computers and the internet. They had fewer teachers because the low unemployment rate meant better job choices other than teachers coming to Fort Garrison. Also, there were more Jewish students, which was 90%, and there were Caucasian, which was 70% or to 90%. Okay. What affected Fort Garrison's economy? Pop, the population boom, which was the booming in economy, which meant that the population came because it was in the country, and now people were getting used to the country instead of the city. There was new technology with the computers and the internet, and the low unemployment rate, which was 4%. Important historical events. 19, in 1991, the World Wide Web was established. The new media begins to flourish, making possible communication of every sort of independent of established print media. Also, Bill Clinton is elected president in 1993, 
and the bombing of the World Trade Center was also in 1993. This is my U.S. timeline. And th these are the sources that I got for my projects and my bibliography.